Hello, hello. Welcome to What's the Big Idea, the only game show that goes, haha, what? I am still getting dressed, I suppose. I gotta put this button in, otherwise it will be unprofessional. Uh, hello, hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea. Yes, okay, here we go. Yes, futurologist Dr. Maynard takes a future quiz. Uh, uh, again, like every week, we do uh, uh, five questions with uh, somebody that's interesting to talk to. Uh, it's a very silly game. Uh, we play for fake money. Today, I am uh, 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 playing with a new method of asking the questions. I've got a little iPad here. We'll see how that plays out. I see Dr. Andrew Maynard is, is in the room, so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, let's get Dr. Andrew Maynard uh, right here. Go live. Uh. Waving, da, da, boom. great, great, great. <laughs> I waved at Dr. Andrew Maynard. Hello, Dr. Andrew Maynard. How are good you? Good afternoon. Good evening. Good, good evening. Yes. Oh, I had no idea that you were. Uh, uh, do I detect a British accent? Just a tad of a British accent. Yes. <laughs> well, this is fantastic. I think you're our first Brit on the show. I didn't even know we were having that. Uh, you are our first futurologist, which uh, for <laughs> a game show about the future seems insane. Uh, so this is honestly thrilling. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Well, uh, we are introducing the question pad right here. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, very fancy. Sometimes you'll catch the reflection of the ring light. I'll try to angle it so it doesn't do that so much. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mayer, we jump right in. Uh, your question for one million fake dollars. So get ready for one million fake dollars. Uh, futurology is commonly defined as the systemic forecasting of the future, especially from present trends, guessing, but fancy, or the study of hip hop star future. Uh, you know, I, I've got to go with two, seeing that that's two. what I do, guessing <laughs> but fancy. Guessing but fancy. You know what? You're the futurologist. I'm going to say uh, the, I know. the board is wrong. <laughs> uh, according to the definition online, it is a systematic forecast. You, you know, future. you can never trust online. You can never. Trust <laughs> no, online. I know it's all it's all editable and everything. But who better than Dr. Andrew Maynard right here? Uh, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and also uh, uh, the book that you just uh, released? Sure. Yeah. So actually, I started life as a physicist, but then something went seriously wrong somewhere down <laughs> the line. So these days, uh, I study emerging technologies and what that means, not only for the future, but how we actually develop and use them in socially responsible ways. So um, I pretty much think about everything that could possibly go wrong with everything we're doing and oh, then no. try to work out how to get it right. Um, so that, that's the big picture stuff. But I mean, and I've written quite a lot, but my latest book, which is this, which is Future Rising, um, is actually a book that takes a really weird, unusual look at the future. Because when I sat down to think about this, I thought, oh, what is the future in the first place? We all talk about it. Nobody really knows what it is. So I actually started off from physics with the Big Bang, and I went all the way through evolution and biology, all the way through to the cognitive sciences, all the way out through the other end to the humanities to grapple with what this thing called the future is and what that means to us and how we can actually be better builders of the future. So that's, that's what the book does in, in a very <laughs> short number of pages. <laughs> You're encompassing the entire history of the universe right. as well as stuff that hasn't happened uh, in just a few, uh, a few pages. Fantastic. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, um, we're going to put those skills to the test in our questions today, uh, um, because, I, you I know, I have great many, many hopes seeing that I've got the first one wrong, but we'll see how this <laughs> That's goes. okay. There's time for redemption. Uh, um, all right. Let's see here. Next question up here. This is for another fake $1 million. Let's see great. if you know this. One. I feel like you will. These start off easy and get much tougher. Uh, futurologist Arthur C. Clarke famously said, any sufficient advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, oh, that's an easy God, one, yeah. or superpowers. Much as I would love it to be superpowers, it's magic. Uh, yes, you are correct. It is magic, Arthur C. Clarke. Do you agree with that? Is, is that something Actually, that I'm not I sure think I do. Can happen? You know, th this is cited so many times, um, and it sounds like it should be true. The things that we don't yes. understand are just the same as magic. I actually think it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. Um, because mm -hmm. even if we don't understand something, we actually have ways of working out whether it's plausible or implausible. And okay. sort of magic, as opposed to real magic rather than sleight of hand, goes into the implausible. So we're actually a little bit smarter than I think Arthur C. Clarke gave us credit for. <laughs> I love it. You're, that's a compliment for uh, all of humanity. Right. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke had no faith in us, so you do, <laughs> uh, which is why you're up. One million fake dollars. Let's move right. on to question three. 
Question three is for five million fake dollars. Oh, That's exactly. worth so much. Oh, what, what is happening here? Oh, here we go. Uh, five million fake dollars. Which world leader also dabbled in futurology, predicting the world would end in a firestorm in 2013? Was that Gandhi? Was that Nixon? Or was that Rasputin? Goodness me. I, you know, I tempts to say Nixon. I'm going to say Rasputin. I mean, he, he, he had all sorts of ideas, so I'm going to go with that. Yeah, he's a sneaky guy. Weird looking dude. It's Rasputin. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, he did predict 100 years after uh, his death that the world would be engulfed in a firestorm. I did and a little course, research. that happened, it's just that we haven't really caught up with reality yet. Yes, it's yes. We're, we're, so we're on a seven year firestorm delay. It's just uh, <laughs> gonna hit us soon. Um, it is funny, I was like trying to find out what did happen in 2013. Um, there was a French movie released about Rasputin in 2013. So maybe that was his uh, yeah, apocalypse yeah. for him. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. We have our question four for Getting $10 higher. billion. Dollars. This is huge. This is amazing. Oh, am I going backwards or forwards? Four, oh, yes. That's so this is our, this is our, oh, right? that real big idea, real or fake. I'm going to describe a, a subject to you, a, a, an idea to change the world. And you have to tell me if you think it is real, someone believes this, someone wants to do this, or if it's something that uh, uh, the other, uh, what's the big idea, writers and I have made up. So okay, allow good. me to describe this big idea, which might be real, might be fake, for 10 billion fake dollars. The soap bubble theory, the idea that the object most closely resembling the future is a soap bubble, iridescent yet fragile, full of wonder and promise, but in need of care if it's to survive and thrive. Is that a real idea? Is that a big idea or is that a fake idea? Yeah, you know, that, that is such a spot on idea. And I say that because I have a horrible idea that I actually wrote those words. <laughs> Bingo, you just got 10 billion fake dollars. <laughs> Tell us about this. I thought this is so interesting because I, I was going, you know, researching your book and yourself and I was like, oh, this is such a weirdly poetic way to put something that's so scientific. And, and it's so funny you brought it up. So, so when I started writing the book, I, I was challenged by a friend to write a book about the future as if it was an object. Um, and yeah. the book, as it ended up, sort of didn't really incorporate that. But I was also asked to do a TEDx talk. And so I went back to that original idea and I had this fantastic talk lined up and then COVID came along. So <laughs> nobody ever saw the talk. But, but at the end of that talk, so I talk about what would it be like if we think about the future as an object? Can we use this as a metaphor for just changing our mindset? And yeah. of course, having raised this question, I was challenged to think, well, if I thought about the future as an object, what would it be? And I ended up with this image of, of a soap bubble. And I've actually got a photograph of a, a soap bubble taken by somebody else that I love because it encapsulates this idea. So the, the, I, I don't know whether you've got an image of it there. Oh, is it this there, guy? There it is. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> So you, you look at that and it looks like a planet, but it looks like a psychedelic planet, all these sort of swirling, beautiful colors. And it's simultaneously beautiful. It's a little bit familiar, but also very unfamiliar. But you know that that soap bubble is so fragile that if we get something even slightly wrong, all that sort of wonder, wonderful potential just disappears. Um, yes. And so I love that metaphor that the future is this thing that is sort of incredible, iridescent, amazing, but so easy to lose if we don't treat it gently. <laughs> for, for, this is not a, a part of the, the quiz, so don't worry about losing millions of fake dollars. <laughs> but what is that thing in your mind, in your opinion, that is the biggest threat to the bubble. We, we are, I mean, on this show, we, we love thinking about a positive future, but what is, what's the biggest you know, pinprick that might threaten, yeah. that keeps you up at night? So, so I think that the, the biggest thing is us not taking seriously what we can do to build a better future. And okay. so that, of course, if you just look at the planet, the planet is gonna survive. The planet doesn't need humans. But if no. we as humans want a future. We have this incredible ability to develop new technologies, to develop social structures that enable us to build a future which is incredibly just and equitable and just fantastic, amazing. The trouble is we get it wrong. We sometimes don't recognize our ability to do things. And then we just made a mess of things because we do things in an unthinking way. So I think the biggest threat to the future is us just not thinking and us having the maturity to use our incredible skills to the common good. A little bit of mindfulness of where we are and maybe where we're I, going. I, I think that's it. And actually that ties back to the, the book, this idea that if we begin to think differently, we can tap into these amazing skills we've got and we can do so much better.
Yeah, I mean, is there any, so I guess on the flip side, what is uh, uh, giving you hope these days to be like, oh, I think, I think the, the bubble's gonna be good. I think, I think I, we're getting there. Uh, I, that, that's, that's a tough question. Um, so, oh no, so, wow. just pure hopelessness. No, actually, so I think we're going, through a, we're going through a dark night in so many ways, but I think we can see glimmers of hope on, on the, the horizon. But I think you've got to yeah. take a long timeline, but even look at something like COVID and the fact yeah. that it is incredible that we've developed these new vaccines, these mRNA vaccines is a testament to our science and our technology and our willingness to work together on big problems. So that actually yeah. gives me hope that yeah. even with big challenges, we can begin to address these. Now, here's the question though, we've, we've overcome the technological hurdle. Can we overcome the social hurdle to see ourselves um, to a, a better COVID-free future? And what does that tell us for what we can do with solving other big problems, which require that social aspect as well as that technical aspect? Yeah. I guess I hadn't, I hadn't even thought, I mean, not that COVID is a, a positive thing, but it does kind of shine a light on like, oh, we can all work together. Right. Uh, and it is such a rare instance of something that truly affects everybody on earth right now um, versus, you know, a particular flood in a certain area doesn't affect everybody. This is like, okay, we're all in the same boat. We don't know what we're doing. We're all in it together. Let's figure our way out of the boat, I guess. That, or... that, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and plus the fact, really trivially, beyond COVID, you just look at the call tech that's going on at the moment. And yeah, the world seems to be a down place at times, but we're doing some amazing things with technology. If you're looking at artificial intelligence, even if you're looking at sort of gene editing, how we're messing around with DNA and doing some incredible things with it. This is a really exciting time to be alive. I'm so glad that the futurologist is excited about the future. I feel like Great. you have the expertise and we're like, okay, good. If, if he's looking ahead and feels good about it, then, then uh, uh, it makes me sleep easier. Good. Um, well, we have one last question. Okay. This is for- The big one. one big one. Five. Dollars. Yeah, well, yeah, sorry. Question five, one trillion fake dollars. Uh, now, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you a question about the future. If I didn't force you to make a prediction that uh, uh, you absolutely, it's such a risky thing. I'm sure every futurologist is like, I hate it when they ask me to make a prediction. Uh, so that's why I'm going to uh, make it even tougher. I'm going to ask you, how and when will I, Eric Cunningham, die? This is our final real big, real dumb question. Okay. When will Eric Cunningham die and how will he die? Okay, and I don't have any options. I'm just gonna make it no, up. No, this me is, one it's for a trillion dollars, sir. You are gonna okay. die. Okay. I'm gonna die. So okay. this is, this when is, this and is, how? When and how. So the when is actually 62 years from now. Okay. 62 years from now, okay. okay. Um, well, so I'm, 62 I'm on board years already. Because, because we're making sort of strides in um, elonging sort of useful life. So you'll still feel like a 30 year old in 62 Ooh. years. You'll be living the dream. You'll be living the dream so much that um, you'll be embracing the latest technology, which is um, autonomous drones for commuting. So forget oh. about autonomous cars. You're just gonna sort of jump into your autonomous drone. It's gonna fly you to wherever you need to be and, and drop you off. So you, you're living the dream with this, okay. um, but not not happy with the, the, the mental abilities you've got. You've also had a, a sort of brain implant. Um, oh, sure, sure. To the net. So you can actually sort of tell us drone where to go with your brain implant. Okay. Everything is fantastic. Apart uh -oh. from the fact, 62 years from now, there is a glitch in the system. Oh no! <laughs> so this is, this is your death. Jimmy, don't do it! It's actually not a bad death, but, but you will be one of the casualties where that slight glitch both fries your brain, but also fries the drone at the same time. So I'm really sorry <laughs> about this. That's how you uh, end. But it will uh, be great up to that point. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm taking the drone with me. I'm so, oh, this is <laughs> terrible. Uh, well, I tell you, 62 years, uh, uh, I'm, I will take that in a heartbeat. And that sounds like a pretty great way to go. So I'm going to give you the, the one trillion fake dollars. Congratulations. You have won. What's the big idea, Dr. Andrew Maynard? Uh, 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 thank you so much for playing. And everybody uh, uh, watching and, and uh, live and on the clips, uh, be sure to follow Dr. Uh, Andrew Maynard at literally Andrew Maynard. You can also, I believe, click the little uh, title here, and it'll it'll have both the Big Idea account and Dr. Maynard's. Uh, it's so exciting. Uh, 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 how does it feel to win over a trillion fake dollars I, uh, for the future? Absolutely <laughs> stoked. 
Um, I will spend the next five minutes trying to work out how I'm going to spend this, but thank you. Oh, good, 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 good. Any other last uh, plugs or anything before we head out? No, uh, well, apart from buying the book, of course. That's the yes, Future thing. Rising. Yes. Future Rising right here. Future Rising, A Journey from the Past to the Edge of Tomorrow. Um, a really easy read if you're looking for an easy read, but actually quite an important one as well. But otherwise, this has been great. A lot of fun. Thank you. And uh, uh, for anyone joining us, uh, tune in next time. We have uh, the CEO of a company that's hoping to change the world via pencils. Uh, <laughs> did you see that one coming, Futurologist? <laughs> I, I, so I, okay, so, so I, I, I love that. I am a pencil geek, so I'm gonna have to tune in for this. Okay, this is gonna be good. All right, well, thank you very much, Dr. Maynard. Uh, have a good future. Thank you very Bye. much. <laughs>